I'll call the finance law subcommittee meeting to order. It's Wednesday, April 1st, 2020. First item on the agenda is student activity requests. There aren't any. Second item is from food services through Brenda Monahan for bid recommendations. And we have six bid recommendations coming from food services. The first one is for bread. They recommend that the award be given to Fatini, I guess it is, in the amount of uh, $3.87 per unit cost. Uh, the second one is for paper. They recommend that go to Mansfield Paper Products for the total bid amount of $94,371.30. The third one is for milk, and that goes to New England Ice Cream, and the bid amount is $300,000. Fourth one is for groceries. That goes to Thurston Foods in the amount of $1,860,453.25. The next one is for equipment repair. The recommendation is to go to American Commercial Appliance in the amount of $68 per hour, as needed, obviously. And the last one is for refrigeration, equipment repair, and that is recommended to go to Mechanical Air for again, a per hour amount of $97 as needed. And that's the uh, recommendations coming from food services. In each case, the listed amounts were the lowest and most responsible bidder. Mr. Souza has his hand up. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Moynihan, I've got a question on the um, equipment repair. Is that, uh, what's the increase from this year as far as last year? I know American Commercial is the current one that we currently use. So the question is, 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 is it would be good to go back out to bid for that or is that, about, is that reasonable? I believe it is, I would confirm it's, it's reasonable. Ka Karen Tapa and I did go through the bids. We review the bids. We're looking at what we have currently. And if we feel that we did not think a bid was responsible and low to our, you know, to what we feel is, is a good bid, we would have gone out to bid again. So right now we are very happy. Uh, I, I'm okay with Miss um, Tapa's recommendations. David, you're not coming in. My microphone's... So it automatically goes off. I think John's just shutting me off, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, New England Ice Cream, they're, they're the current bidder. I mean, they're the current vendor. Now, um, again, on that one, should we go for a second bid on that? Be, or do you think that that's reasonable compared to what we're paying this year? Again, if we did not feel that it was a reasonable bid, we would have gone out to bid again. Um, we have followed all MGL laws, and we feel that this is a responsible bid, and we are okay with going ahead and recommending all six bids. Yeah. Yeah, they're Thank not you. Part of contractors this year. They were a couple of years ago, and we do buy ice cream from them, but from them. they're not the current ones with, with milk. <clears throat> Thank, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'm, if you're going to move, if you want to move these all as a group, I'll move that we adopt the recommendations of the administration and award the bids as listed. Second. Joe. Joe. Is he muted, Steve? I think we lost him. Oh, didn't he say he was having oh, technical uh, difficulties? Yeah, he, he was having technical difficulties. Um, uh, Joe, do you want to take over? Yeah, okay. Uh, so we have a motion to uh, adopt the recommendations and award the bids. No further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. The motion is carried. And the and we have uh, there's no uh, uh, facilities update. Uh, yeah, I'll, provide, I'll yeah. provide facilities update when we cover our EMOC communication during my superintendent's report. <clears throat> You're muted, David. Make a motion. We adjourn. 
Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? We're out of here. We're out of here. Make Okay, call the meeting to order. And could we have the roll call, please, Mrs. Fagan? Certainly. Uh, Ms. Doherty? Present. Mr. Pulowski? Present. Mr. Fiore? Mr. Fiore? Present. Oh, sorry. Mrs. Fagan's present. Mr. Martin? Present. Mrs. Almeida? Present. Mr. DeMello? Present. Mr. Souza? Present. Mayor O'Connell. I also have a copy of the prayer here. Can we do this? <laughs> sure. Okay. Lord, as we begin this session, let us acknowledge your goodness and mercy and ask your blessings on all our deliberations. We thank you for the opportunity to be of service to our community and to the young people entrusted to our care. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> um, You're welcome. So approval of the minutes of March 4th and March 12th. Board approval. Second. Motion no. made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. None. So voted. Um, superintendent's update, Mr. Cabral. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, so if you'll allow, I'm going to give the school committee a quick update uh, going through our EMOC protocol. So again, we'll talk about what we're doing with regards to education. We'll discuss our meal distribution plan and how we're supporting families. We'll discuss what we're doing operations-wise. We'll also, I'll also let you know what we're doing with regards to compensation and to our staff members. And also, we'll give you a quick update on how we're going to be changing and making up our communications. So just going through education, uh, as you are aware, yesterday, and I won't go into too, many, too much detail, I'll do another session tomorrow. Uh, yesterday, we had a six and a half hour uh, bargaining session with the TEA regarding our remote learning plan. Uh, we were continuing work on some items that we need to wrap up prior to our meeting tomorrow at 10 o'clock. I am fairly optimistic that we should reach an agreement in scheduling a subcommittee meeting with the TEA subcommittee. Uh, on Friday at three o'clock so that we can uh, ratify that on our end then obviously the TEA will bring it to their members for ratification but we are very close and again we got a lot of productive work done yesterday and I what I will say is that philosophically um, both sides both parties uh, there weren't many issues actually I can't think of any issues that we disagreed on as, as uh, philosophically we were coming at it from um, we were coming at it from the from the from the, the same side when we were looking at it uh, I also will mention too that today, Mr. Barada and, uh, and his team distributed elementary school packets. So those were done at all our meal sites. So I'll unmute Mr. Barada. Chris, is, is there anything you'd like to add regarding our work around education? If you can unmute yourself. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, today was no April Fool's joke as we delivered packets to all the meal sites for K through four. Um, the packets were quite thick. And in, in the prior set, it was just for say a week or so, and I just dealt with English language arts and math. This time it was a packet's worth of three to four weeks worth of work encompassing ELA reading, math, and science. Science was not included in the first round, so it added a little bit more uh, depth, I guess you'd say, to the packets. Uh, besides the actual physical packets going out, uh, Kathy Perry, myself, Carolyn Blaineau have been inventorying all the digital platforms that the district uses in preparation for uh, infusion into our remote learning plan that uh, Mr. Cabral talked about. So we're in the process of selecting or using, identifying those apps that our teachers use most frequently and are most familiar with that they'll use to shuttle in the next phase of our learning. In addition to that, we've tried to uh, access professional development opportunities for our staff members. We're uh, very close to securing some professional development for our educational assistance uh, for PBIS, which will be cost-free part of which has to do with money that was uh, remaining on a two-year grant that was carried over, in addition to accessing potentially some of that SSOS money. So we're also looking for uh, professional development opportunities for our staff members as well, teachers, educators, in terms of uh, some of the digital tools that we'll be uh, relying on in the next few weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barada. 
So I just want to let the committee know too, I do have attorney Gay on my cell phone. He was unable to call in. So he is on my cell phone on speaker so he can hear you. And uh, obviously he'll be able to respond accordingly when we get, when we continue on with my report. With regards to meals, uh, that is going very successfully. And as I stated earlier, to our principals and to the public, we're gonna continue serving meals, uh, lunch and breakfast to, the, to our students until we are told to stop. So unless we are told to stop, we plan to continue serving meals Monday through Friday. We're averaging about, between lunch and breakfast, we're averaging between 1,000 to 1,200 meals per day. And we just got word from Mrs. Papa our food service director, that we may be able to add three or five more sites. So Mrs. Papa uh, and Mrs. Perry and Mrs. Moynihan are identifying potential locations. Once we've identified the locations, we need to share that with the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education to get their approval. So we are looking forward to adding more sites and providing students and families with nutritious meals. All right, Ms. Mrs. Perry, anything you want to add regarding meals, Kathy? Sure. So today um, we saw huge numbers, um, particularly because we were giving the packet. So we had anticipated that. So I had spoken to Karen Papper previously and said, expect a lot more meals on um, Wednesday. Well, as it turned out, we had 230, we served 235 meals at Mulcahy. Now, just to kind of put things in perspective, we'd been running about 50 or 60 meals a site when we first began. So today, um, 235 at Mulcahy, 209 at Hopewell, 128 at Martin, and 96 at Parker. All of our neighborhood sites, we did up around 60. So we are, I'm working with Karen Papa and also Mrs. Moynihan, and we're identifying some other locations throughout the city that we think would make sense and would be helpful to families because some of our spots are a little bit too far for families to walk to. So I have been using information that I've received from families that have called me directly as well as looking at a lot of the places where our free and reduced children live. We're putting all that together and um, we think we have at least three sites that we can propose on Friday um, to the Department of Ed. And if it is approved, then the um, three additional sites would start on Monday. Um, so we're excited about that. Thank you, Kathy. And then the, the other piece I want to mention on the operations is a follow-up from the last meeting regarding our work to communicate with all our families. So I know we've been working diligently with our staff uh, to contact or communicate with all our families using multiple uh, uh, outlets at our disposal. One of the things that we're not doing that we were doing at first is we're not sending people to individuals homes and the reason for that is based on what I've been learning from the police and fire department and also booster where when they're responding to homes they're treating each visit as if you know someone in the home uh, could be a potential you know, patient or victim of COVID-19. So we've stopped that practice uh, to make sure that we don't put any of our families at risk so we are continuing to use email and use our phone calls in this week. Uh, I believe it was yesterday. Um, again, I apologize. I'm losing track of the days. I believe it was yesterday. I sent out a robocall uh, letting families know that we care and that we're checking in. And we, wanna, we want them to check in with their teachers and their principal and that we'll be checking in with them. So I plan to send out a robocall on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from this point forward. And I'll talk a little bit more about that on communications, but I'll let Mr. Barada and Mrs. Perry, if you want to give an update regarding the number of families that we've reached out to successfully and the work we're doing to connect with those we haven't heard from yet. Um, sure. So um, it's amazing the difference a week makes. So we were, I believe, up around 900 last week, which I thought was pretty good. That was, you know, uh, about 91%. We now, um, as of today, have about a total of 267 families um, that we have not been able to connect with, which is just incredible. It's a little under 1% of our entire population. We have some schools that um, Bennett and Mulcahy have made a 100% connection. Um, and then the numbers just really are very impressive um, moving forward. Friedman, three families out of a out of a building of almost you know of about 780. So I think it's due in large part to the teachers 
reaching out. The teachers have done a tremendous job and then reporting back to the principals. We've used our community facilitators in a variety of ways. And I'm happy to report the population that I was most concerned with, our McKinney-Vinto students, our homeless students, and our foster care students. We've been able to make a lot of connection with them. In fact, we've mailed every McKinney-Vinto student, every student that's in a shelter, we've mailed packets to. So we've been able to provide them with some of the educational resources that we're doing. Dalila Mendoza has done a great job um, and with her staff in regards to our EL population. I talk frequently with the Family Resource Center. Um, I actually was over there today dropping off packets there. Um, the We Care email has been very helpful. Um, they've emailed, I've been on the recipient of the, I'm the recipient of the emails there. And one of the great things that's happened over the past couple of days is our guidance counselors are reaching out and calling and they're actually doing the eighth grade scheduling over the phone um, with our seventh grade students. So happy to report that we are, as I said, less than 1% and we're gonna continue on. You know, I, just to put things in perspective, I looked at attendance. I did a sampling of attendance over a few months this school year. And I noticed we usually run about 95% attendance, which is maybe about 500 kids out a day. Um, so to think that we are now, um, as of right now, 640, we're at uh, 267 is, is pretty impressive. And as I said, I'm, I'm so appreciative particularly to my community facilitators. I'm gonna give a huge shout out to them. Chris Green, um, Carmen Maldonado, Lynn Farina, and Liz Pacheco have just done extraordinary work in regards to reaching out to families. Thank you, Kathy. And then I'll also, uh, I think it's also appropriate to thank you for your efforts, Kathy. And cool. to ensure that the public access our playgrounds and that Mrs. Moynihan stays on top of the groundskeepers to make sure they check those daily. Uh, Mrs. Moynihan has worked with the city to power down our buildings so that we can uh, maximize efficiencies with regards to heat and electricity. And the other piece too that I should mention regarding our playground is we're actually gonna be removing the rims from our basketball courts to make sure that kids or uh, the public don't congregate at facilities. So again, we're really doing our part, again, following the lead of the city to uh, stress the importance of social distancing to, uh, to our younger population. Mrs. Moynihan, if you wanna unmute yourself and cover anything on operations, and then you can jump right into compensation, please. Thank you, uh, Mr. Cabral. So yes, we have been working diligently with the city as well, with the playgrounds and all, as our groundskeepers have been checking multiple times a day, the facilities throughout the district to confirm that no child, or they're not taking down the tapes that we have um, blocking off of our playgrounds. In addition to the facilities piece, we are continuing working with our custodians. Uh, principals are checking in with their custodians to making sure that their schools are clean um, and disinfected. Our team will go back after daily and disinfect the cafeteria kitchens where our staff are preparing the meals for our, for our families. And they also um, disinfect the trucks that they are delivering um, the food into as well. So that has been happening and we will be looking at schedules to see how things are going with the custodians. But um, overall, things are going very, very well and happy to see that everybody is staying safe and healthy. Thank you, Mrs. Moran. And a quick update. I mean, I know it's just going to be real quick. Compensation and staff. Yes, compensation. So what I've been doing is we've been working with, um, with principals. Principals do reach out to their staff members if they have any questions about any type of payroll question. The staff member will ask their principal, the principal will contact me, and then I will work with my payroll staff. Thank you very much to my payroll staff, Teresa, Donna, and Nancy, who have been working behind the scenes, getting everybody paid in an efficient manner. So we have been, we've had a, you know, a few errors on, on payment, but it was quickly fixed, and the city has been very helpful with that as well. And then the last piece I'll mention on operation, on uh, compensation and operations will be, 
no, I want to give Mrs. Moynihan uh, a shout out and some credit for the work that she is doing in collaboration with Rick Ames to sanitize city facilities as well as school facilities. So again, you see the building department in the school department working hand in hand for the betterment of the community. So uh, thank you, Mrs. Moynihan, for those efforts. Then the last piece that I'll talk about will be communication. So again, I plan, it was very well received yesterday, so I plan to continue with morning robocalls uh, to utilize those as a check-in and continue to remind parents and students and also staff to check in with each other. Again, that was very well received and that's something that we'll plan to do moving forward. We will be doing some public uh, video announcements as well to ensure that people who aren't reading our letters or people who aren't checking their email or text have another form of communication that we can put on channel 10, or I'm like, sorry, Taunton Education Network, and, or maybe possibly share on DCAM as well. So again, we really wanna make sure that we're capitalizing and maximizing our ability to communicate with all stakeholders. And then it kind of tying, falling into communications, you did receive a draft of the communication that uh, legal counsel attorney Gay and Thomas Gay wrote on behalf of the school department. So you do have that in your, pa uh, actually I sent it to you yesterday. If you need to put it on the screen for people to share, I can put it on the screen for people to share. And I do believe there was a document shared this morning by Mr. DeMello regarding some edits. So we have attorney Gay here with us uh, on my phone. So I'll, that concludes my report. So I'll, I'll allow anyone who, uh, if there's any questions on my report, I think this would be the appropriate time. So the letter we're looking Excuse at. Excuse that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm trying to. Okay, Mrs. Doherty and then Mr. Souza. Just a question about, so the letter we're looking at is the one dated March 31st to Ms. Berseth. Is that the draft? Correct, that is the draft letter written by Attorney Gay and Thomas Gay. And this is what we're discussing? That is the letter that I brought to you that we were prepared to send to EF Tours. And you have not yet sent it? We have not yet sent it. So we're discussing it, okay. If Thank there's you. a, if there's a, if there's a wish of the group. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Souza, did you have your hand up? Yes, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, I had three questions on the report, but not EF. If you want to just wait till the end and I'll take it, I'll just try, if they go want to roll on EF tours, why don't they do that? And then I'll follow up on with Mr. Cabral on the little questions on his report after that. You probably should get EF tours off the table. Sure. Thank you. Mr. DeMello? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, through you, Mayor, to Superintendent Cabral. The draft that I sent back to you today, I unintentionally hit all, which wasn't my intent, it was supposed to be to you only. Did you happen to share that with Attorney Gay? I did. And his thoughts, Attorney Gay? Uh, he shared that with my nephew. I don't know exactly what the change was, uh, Mr. DeMello. Well, I, can, I can pull the document up if we'd like. Uh, David, you won't be able to see it. So I'm sorry. I emailed it, yeah, David, I emailed it to you and Thomas this morning. Truth, I was not under the feeling all so well today. So sorry, David. Uh, I know you know that from last night. So. Right. Uh, but I think I'm just. Uh, I think I was just. Uh, I don't know. I, I think I'm okay. But uh, let's see. When did you send it this morning? It would have been this morning, late morning. Okay. It would have uh, been sent to you and Thomas. I mean, if you want, you can come back if you want. I mean, we can continue on. I'm sorry, David. I said I only have 70 of them, so I'll <laughs> thank you. But uh, it's uh, busier just when I, as if I'm not even. Right. Oh, God. What, what, uh, you want me to ask my questions and then we can come back? Go ahead. What's your question? Uh, here, here it is. Right. No, this is the Zoom option. Um, well, why don't you look for the letter, David? We'll come back to you. I'll have David Souza ask his questions. We'll come back to EF Toys. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Souza. Okay, I got it. Okay. Why don't you take a look at it, David? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. You're not here, David Souza. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I got a call this afternoon from an elementary parent about the website 
on the, um, I said it to the superintendent, but I haven't had a chance to follow up with him. Um, this could be from Mr. Barada. So the, is the first and second grade uh, work on reading combined and then the third and fourth grade combined? Because parents are getting confused. You know, they, they're, they're printing out pages and they're realizing half of it's first and half of it's for second and same thing with third and fourth. Um, is that something we can get uh, straightened out? Because you have it, the second grade, you have it in the second grade slot, but uh, it's actually first to second. Right. We, uh, <clears throat> learning from the first time when we had individual grade level packets, it became too difficult at the site to go through and to get people moving quickly to social distancing. We broke up the packets pre-K to second, three and four. What we can do is look on a website if we could break it out by grade level individually that way. It, it quite honestly, is as cumbersome as it is, it's, it's more efficient at the sites themselves to give it to the children in one giant packet, because uh, if in the upper right-hand corner or in cover sheets themselves, it'll say third grade or fourth grade math or second grade science and such. So we can do a better job of delineating that, but I think we should keep with the staple packs together so we can get people um, moving out much more quickly. I've got no problem with that. It's just that someone starts to print and they're printing 48 pages and all of a sudden they only need 24. And that's, that's, I think that's the, probably the bigger, that's probably the bigger issue. We can, um, we, we can address that on the site. Th thank you, uh, Mr. Barada. Um, the other thing is, um, I know we're working on kindergarten registration. Is, do we have any resolution on that yet? Uh, actually, we've talked about it and we know we need to um, move forward with kindergarten registration. So we're looking at an online platform as well as possibly a, a later, a, a visit. if we can do registrations over the summer as well, we will. But we're also looking at a platform where we can do registrations online. I, I kind of like that idea. They just punch everything in and then we get back to them if we need more information. That's kind of that's kind of interesting. And, and then I just have one more uh, item on, just curious now because I know the front office staff is not there. What, what are we doing in the uh, payroll in that uh, business office? Are they all working remotely? Because I know that's kind of a tight space. Are they all working remotely and, uh, and how is that working? Yeah, so what we have going on in there, and Mrs. Moynihan can jump in after, because uh, I've, I've had the pleasure of watching the plan that Mrs. Moynihan put in place the last few days. So we, we had payroll come in one day and we had bookkeeping come in on a separate day. And it's really just the head bookkeeper and maybe uh, an assistant bookkeeper coming in and working together. So, and they've been practicing social distance. But most of, the work that they can, most of the work that they can do from home, they're working from home, but there are some things that requires them to be in. So for example, uh, we have bookkeeping right now going through our FY20 budget. They don't have access to the FY20 budget on soft right at home. They physically have to be in their cubicle or working on their desktop. Uh, to approve vouchers, uh, to approve POs, to generate POs, and also to review the lines and make adjustments to the lines as we unencumber funds that have been encumbered for FY20. Yes, thank you. I appreciate the explanation. And now I'm all set, Madam Mayor. I appreciate your, everyone's patience. Thank you. Thank you, David. All right, did we want to go back to Mr. DeMello? Uh, Attorney Gay is, is all set. Okay. Uh, what I, what I, Mr. Demelos, is this this comes from you, as I understand it? Yeah, I mean, some of the a couple of paragraphs are actually your paragraphs, uh, and I just amended. Uh, but you've shortened the letter, basically. Exactly, but I also added some some dates certain as far as a response from them, and uh, what else did I do? I, I think I, I understand what you're trying to do here. Um, the the letter, the shortening of the letter, that's that's a that's a sort of a how you want to look at things viewpoint. I mean, I, we tried to explain that uh, this is a tough situation for everybody. Try to understand that they have issues just like the, the, the people have issues. Uh, from the school department, just to really understand, the, the contract is not with the school department. So we have actually no legal standing. I mean, we, you have a, an ethical obligation to try to help your students, which is what we're trying to do here. A legal position we have not um, so given that what we were trying to do is get them to at least talk to us and come up with something that they can everybody can work with they're a pretty good sized company and I would hope that they'll survive this but like everybody else we don't know and um, 
what we were trying to do was coerce them into speaking with us rather than just ignoring us with a with a demand. That's entirely a power you want to proceed. I have no problem going with a shorter letter if that's what that's what the people want to do. Uh, as far as the deadline, you know, if it weren't in, if we weren't doing what we're doing right now, I would agree with the deadline. I think it's a little bit kind of un, unreasonable to think that they're going to make this decision in ten days. Uh, again, we have no way to force them to do anything. So we need to try to coax them to do something, uh, which is what we were trying to do here. Uh, let's see. May, may I just say something? I mean, if, 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 Tom, uh, if the school department or the district has nothing to do with these trips, why are school committee approving these trips then? Why are we giving the blessing to these trips if we have nothing to do with Tom Public Schools, the school committee, or anything to do with the city of Tom? I would have to, I would have to go back and review the field trip policy, Mr. DeMello, to answer that one. Cause I know when the policy was updated a few years ago, I know we spent a lot of time with the previous administration looking at the field trip policy and there was some distinguishing, we distinguished between in district field trips, out of state field trips and overseas field trips. So I'd have to go back and review the policy and understand why school committee is is ultimately approving it, even if we are not signing off on the contract. Sure. Well, I mean, I, maybe I shouldn't talk on this, but I mean, I think what it is, it's an opportunity for students to socialize together and to see another country. I, I don't think it's unusual for school committee. I mean, this is, this is done all around the country. Never mind. Did we lose him? John Cabral is on mute. Oh, David, sorry, David. Could you repeat that? I muted myself and they missed it. Sorry, David. Oh, <laughs> I forget I'm, that you're on the phone. Okay. Sorry. I'm saying that, that really we're a facilitator. And I guess the reason for facilitation is to allow students to have social, uh, socialize with other students in a foreign country. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing trip. I mean, I know my kids took it. I wasn't able to do it when I was a kid. We didn't have that. But I, I think it... Uh, yeah, that's the only reason. I mean, it's from a legal perspective, you have no, you're right. You have no standing. Right. So, I mean, uh, like you, I, I think uh, travel is, is fascinating. Uh, that's my entire career for 35 plus years. And I do 42 trips globally a year for the university. I just think that, you know, since Taunt Public Schools is part of this, and a survey that went out on, on, on Sunday, uh, Superintendent Cabral, through you, Madam Mayor, uh, did we get a response on that survey so we can better gauge how to formulate this letter? Because I just assumed that the letter that was put together by Attorney Gay was uh, based on survey results. So do we have those survey results from Sunday's email to the parents? Mr. Barada, you mind unmuting yourself, please? Sure. Uh, if I could add one little aspect of why it was informed, I was informed why those trips go from School Committee International. I guess it goes back a number of years. One is to show that somehow any field trip, whether foreign or domestic, has uh, educational purpose. And that's why they'd have like lessons and such. And this would be, you know, getting acclimated to another culture. The other thing primarily for these international trips is to allow our student handbook to be enforced overseas, which is a little bit more uh, structure that the, that the uh, advisors would have versus if something happened with just uh, someone outside the school department having a trip. I think those were the two major reasons why it was these brought to my attention. Maybe those who are on the board longer have a better perspective on that. In terms of the results of the survey, uh, as of 145 this afternoon, we had uh, about 43 respondents. Mr. Purpose sent out the email again. We have 51 total student responses. Uh, seven of those underclassmen, parents, of underclassmen uh, would like to see the voucher used for a future trip. 43 of the 51 would like to uh, obviously cancel the trip, ask for a refund, and then have the district try to explore whatever possible legal avenues are for them. I will also say that if the cancellation goes through where it says minus $1,000. I've been alerted that actually they'll lose $750 if canceled by April 30th. 
755 to be exact. So I guess, uh, Madam Mayor, once again, through you, I, I guess the results speak for themselves that we should pursue Attorney Gay's letter. Uh, again, my colleagues, we have eight of us together. I'm not gonna speak for everybody. I'm just speaking from my perspective. Uh, we send the letter and uh, the language, I think Attorney Gay it, it makes perfect sense that we wanna kind of smooth it or whatever you wanna call it to, to explain the terms of why we're financially stricken these folks that are, can't afford to go now uh but again i think a date certain is important because if they're going to wait till april 30th to give us an answer but which is the deadline they're giving everybody else uh i'm just very fearful and, and, and attorney gay i mean you know a lot of these companies they're very big but we've seen uh airlines and textron or extron whatever it is go out of business uh so i don't care how many millions of dollars they have in the bank they can still a default and, and change names and operate under another another name. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Uh, Mrs. Fagan. Yeah, thank you. Um, I actually liked the letter that, that uh, Greg had composed. I thought his methodology behind it was you don't want to show all your cards at once if you start with, with a certain point of view, which is the money part. But then the other thing can come after. I, I frankly don't care how we do it. But those options that were there, they didn't include options that other people want. Some people didn't want that at all. They just wanted the money back. You know, so it wasn't about what grade they were in or anything like that. I, my, my, personally, my grandson's a junior, but he's going to be working next summer. They, they, they planned this trip because it fit into this year. And there is no Greece trip or, um, off it for next year as it is right now. So he won't be interested in doing that next year. So I don't know why we, we said if you're a 12th grader, why that made any difference. And there are people that have lost their jobs or, it, you know, or, or just can't work for a while until things straighten out. And those people are hurting too. So I, 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 don't, I don't understand though. I, I can't get my arms around the fact that we're talking about this not involving the school department when every single trip, even the ones that, you know, go to DC, come to us. Why are they coming to us if they're not? And it's all teachers that go. All the chaperones are teachers. Well, I don't know how we can say we're not involved with that. I think you feel the same that I do, Greg. That it, Our name's on it because it comes to every meeting and we have all these documents you have to present and a time frame in which they're presented. So I don't know how, how we're not you know, in this thing, how we can just be say, well, it's, it's a contract between just the parents and that group when teachers are organizing it. Somebody just explain that to me. Mr. Falowski. Thank you, Madam Mayor, uh, through you. So I got a couple of issues with the EF Tours thing, and then I have a number of questions regarding remote learning. So I'll stick with the EF Tours right now. So um, yeah, so the first thing, I got to agree with uh, Mrs. Fagan. Um, I didn't think the survey made any sense at all. Um, I mean, it seems like there's really two options. One option is either they're going to accept the voucher for 100% of what they paid, a voucher that they could use in the future, or they're going to want a refund of cash. Um, nothing on the list said anything about a refund of cash. It was confusing. It almost sounded like getting a voucher minus $1,000. Like, why would anybody ever choose that? So I think we need to kind of relook at that survey. Um, and yeah, as, as was mentioned earlier, it's not $1,000. I don't know where $1,000 came from. It is exactly 755 broken down by $95 registration fee that very upfront when you sign that contract as the parent of a child under 18, $95 registration fee, non-refundable under any circumstances. Then there's $160 insurance fee, which you have no choice over. Everybody's opted into that uh, as decided by us. Um, so that is said to be non-refundable. And then there's the $500 cancellation fee. So um, I, I, I like Mr. DeMello's uh, approach on the letter. I think we should act, absolutely be starting with asking them to uh, eliminate that $755 and allow people to get a full 100% cash refund. Um, but if we had to negotiate back and forth, I mean, I, I think as a parent who signed up for it, um, I would I would accept paying the ninety five dollars, but I'd have a little trouble paying the hundred and sixty dollar fee for insurance that doesn't even exist because, as I understand, 
um, Alliance Insurance, whoever the insurance company is, they said that they're only going to get they're only going to pay insurance if you physically have COVID nineteen and can't attend oh, a trip. It's got nothing to do with whether it was canceled on account of the virus situation. So I think it's kind of hard to swallow paying an insurance fee for insurance that doesn't really exist. Um, and then five hundred bucks cancellation fee. I think it'd be reasonable to uh, to let that guy let that guy go. So. That's that's what I have to say about that. John. Yes, John? yes att Attorney Gay has a comment. Yeah, I just want to comment. Uh, the full refund request that, that's in uh, the metal uh, letter is it's in ours also. That's not a change. That's no different. We ask for the same thing. Thank you, David. Uh, Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Almeida. Don't mind there. Uh, well, Mrs. Almeida had a question. Thank you. I think the letter is, is fine. However, I don't know, and I, and I sympathize with the families and everyone that put all that money out. I, I really do. <laughs> but I don't understand what our letter is going to do any different than the superintendent's letters and the attorney general looking into this case. We're just a little tiny pinpoint on the iceberg of this whole situation. And we're spending so much time on this, not the amount of money that the parents put out isn't important. But we have so many other things that are important right now with this virus and how we're going to educate our children and so forth and so on. Maybe we need to look at a different policy for travel and how we go about uh, securing these agencies that are doing the travels for us. Again, I, I support the letter coming from us, but um, want to put a time certain on it, that's fine. But the Attorney General is looking into it. It's been on, the, on Channel 5 News, I don't know how many times about this company. And I, I think we're banging our head against a wall and we have so many other important things that need to be done. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Mrs. Doherty, did you have a question? I, I have a comment. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think that uh, these are clearly unusual times and these issues would never have presented themselves had we not been in the situation of COVID-19. We may not have a legal connection as the contracts are with the families, but we do have a moral connection to stand with our families um, mm -hmm. In regard to, I'm sure that many of those families are either going to lose or have already lost their jobs. They're going to be in difficult, maybe in difficult financial circumstance. So I think that it's important for us to, to put out, to go and pursue this letter and get the maximum amount of resources that we can back to the families. I think that that's very important. The other thing that I want to say is that these trips we, we demanded a curriculum that accompany the request to have these trips go forward. And we look at that curriculum. What is the connection to what you're doing? What does it mean? What are you going to do before, during, and after the trip? So that there is a definite connection to uh, TPS. We couldn't let a group of our high school students go off independent of the school district if they're connecting to curriculum. So. I just think stand with the families, get as much as we possibly can. I think that the letter that uh, obviously the two letters, Mr. DeMello's and the legal counsel are parallel with the exception of the time certain. And I think that there should be a time certain, otherwise it will drift. So we may say April 10th, we may say April 15th, the company might say that's impossible, but at least we have put our cards on the table in terms of what our expectation are. Thank you, Mrs. Doherty. Mr. Fiore. Thank you, Madam Mayor. E even though the Taunton Public Schools may not be a direct party to a contract, we are secondarily a party in that any smart lawyer who would get a case like this would look to impute liability to anybody possible to get the results that they want. And I think uh, we would probably be facing some degree of liability if this isn't taken care of. And that makes us interested in the contract. I think we uh, 
we would be protecting our own interests as well as our our students' interests because you know um, my professional colleagues who are more of the ambulance chasing kind of mindset uh, are going to look for anybody possible they could sue if it actually came to that. So I think we need to do what we can to prevent suits and and uh, work on a on a settlement and. Uh, and Mr. DeMello, uh, in his letter, did cite the, the doctrine of uh, force majeure. I, I uh, had raised the issue of uh, impossibility of performance, which is basically the same thing. And, uh, you know, I, I think we have a, a right to see our people out of this. And I think we have an interest ourselves because uh, we need to be approving these things because we need to be able to protect ourselves when the time comes. Okay, so, so it seems like we have two issues before us. Um, does everyone want to send a letter and what should the letter say? It sounds like everyone's in agreement about sending the letter. You need to do a couple of votes. Um, I think the other thing that we need to really sit here and pinpoint because we could talk about this all night long is what should the letter say? Mr. DeMello. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, through you, Mayor, uh, Mrs. Almeida, I understand we're spending a lot of time on this. We are, because on March 12th, we voted to get this letter going and moving. So yes, I agree with you. We're spending an awful lot of time because on March 12th, as a committee, we voted to get the letter out, I assume, the next day or as, as, as reasonably quickly as possible. And on another note, I don't know which colleague mentioned it, we are responsible because there has been case law and Attorney Gay, you can verify this, that kids have been on a trip, they've broken legs or they got stung by a bee or some type of insect, and the academy that they went to, which would remain nameless, got sued. Not only did the tour company, but the academy did too. So we are on the hook because TPS is written all over this. So again, I'd like to move forward with the letter, whichever my colleagues agree, which form a letter, and Attorney Gay, I think the amount that Mr. Pawalski keeps mentioning, the 755, is the amount that should be stated, not the thousand dollars. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. I mean, and it would be nice to be able to actually get some action done here tonight. Um, I'll call, I, I think uh, Mr. Souza had his hand up and then Mrs. Fagan. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think it's, uh, we need to move forward with this. Uh, we definitely have a an obligation <coughs> to follow through with the family to follow through with the families on this. There's no question about it in my mind as a parent that has gone on trips before when my, when my son was in this district, I went on the trips, I know exactly what goes on. They follow the school rules, they go with the curriculum. So there's no question we have a standing in this. Uh, and if, if nothing else, I think Carol's hit it right on the head. We have a moral obligation in there. We, this is unusual times and we need to follow through with this. And, uh, 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 Portuguese. I think we should ask Attorney Gay what he thinks is, and I don't. I, I want to defer to Greg on this, really. But I think we should ask Attorney Gay what he thinks is going to get the most bite out of the out of which combining letters. But certainly the 755 added in there, and ask Attorney Gay what what, what he thinks his recommendation should be. If and, and then move move from there if there's any additions or whatever the committee wants to do. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. So do, do we want to go back to Attorney Gay? Because we really need to make a decision here. David? Yeah, I mean, um, my suggestion would be essentially to use our letter with Mr. DeMello's last sentence with the, with the, uh, with the demand date being, uh, I can redo it with the demand date being April 10th. And also we could reduce the $1,000 demand to seven. The 775 that you want, 755, 755, 755. Uh, and that's a reasonable request. Uh, <clears throat> go along with it, I don't know, but that's certainly reasonable. Madam Mayor, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mrs. Fagan did have her hand up. I, I just have a question though how do we make people whole with this because they're not getting anything for that? I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just have, I have a real problem with this. They, you know, the thing is, I don't think anybody's going to feel safe sending their children off there in, in the end of June with this stuff going on all over the place. The numbers are still peaking in this country. There's other countries. They're not sending the planes out. They can't fulfill what they said they were going to do. I don't understand 
why we're having such a tough time with this country. And I'm ready to go back when we finally can sit together and have meetings and just stop all these trips altogether because I don't like what's going on here. I don't think it's fair to these people that have lost jobs and have no money now and, and this money's being held by a company that can't even give you anything. And 755, I wouldn't want to lose $755. And, and you know, I know that my son paid the whole thing up so he wouldn't violate a contract. So he's out a lot of money. So I just think for all the families that this happened to, this isn't fair. Thank you, Mrs. Fagan. Are, are we gonna be able to get a motion on language? Uh, Mr. So yes, uh, uh, I, I would like to set the motion forward. Uh, and the motion is, is to send the letter as Attorney Gay has developed the letter with the language of a time certain date, April 10th, I think is reasonable if we send it out within the next day or so. And as Attorney Gay mentions, the school committee would request option two be amended to provide a full refund with no reduction for costs. So the 755 is only to be replacing the thousand dollars in option number two because there's a, a, a mistake on the monies, but I no way want to give up $755. I don't want to give up one dime. So again, provide a full refund with no reduction for cost is the ultimate goal of this letter. And that's the motion on the floor. Second. I'll second that. That's exactly what the letter says, John. Thank you, that's, David. He's right. He's right. That's exactly what it says. Okay. Okay. So we second. have a motion and a second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Madam Mayor. On discussion, Mr. Souza. I've got a question on an ethics uh, uh, to the chair. I got a, a question on an ethics. We've got two committee members with family members and one has a, has a, has a financial interest in this. I'm not sure that they can vote. Uh, I, not that it matters in this vote, but I, I don't know if the members want to recuse themselves on this because they have a, that, 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 this could be an ethics violation. I just want to warn them ahead of time. One person has a direct standing interest and the other one has a family member with a standing interest. Do Mr. we need a Gay? attorney Gay? Well, I mean, uh, those kinds of questions I can't technically legally answer without a written request, but let me just say that although there is a financial interest in the strict, in the strict sense of the word, in this particular case, it's more like it's a global request. It's not a request for any individual being treated different than others, and I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a conflict. I, I just just wanted to warn the two people. Just I, I wasn't trying to I wasn't trying to throw salt on a wound. Believe me, I just wanted to get everybody ahead of time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So so we do have uh, Mrs. Doherty. Just before we vote, uh, are we amending the attorney's letter to include a date certain? Yes. Recommendation. Yes. And yes. The date yes. April 10th. Yes. 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 I, I take that as a yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So are we ready? Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. The motion passes. Thank you, David. Okay, John. I'll talk to you first thing in the morning. All right, thank you, David. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Okay, so are we still on superintendent's update or are we through with that, Mr. Cabral? I believe Mr. Pulaski had some remote learning questions. Okay, I, Mr. Pulaski. I just wanna say before Mr. Pulaski, you ask your questions, we are impact bargaining the remote learning plan. So I may not be able to answer questions just because we're impact okay. bargaining. That's coming up further on the agenda, though. Yes, we have an item on the agenda for remote learning. And I covered, I'm cover, I covered it during the, my superintendent's report. Oh, well, I have questions, too. Go ahead, Mr. Pulaski. Mr. Pulaski. All right. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, uh, so I have, uh, I have six questions. Um, and a lot of these are uh, coming from uh, uh, parents that I've spoken with and connected with over the week. Um, so my first question is, and uh, it's regarding April vacation. So when it's actually April vacation, obviously we're going to be out of school, but are we going to treat it as if it was vacation or are we going to expect our students to be doing work and our teachers to be doing work? Uh, actually, am I muted? No. Actually, that's, no. Come up, that's come up in many districts and that's a question that superintendents, including myself, 
of polls to the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education on whether or not April vacation will be canceled during this extended closure. So if April vacation were to be canceled, it would be treated as a regular week. Uh, if you wanted to ask me my opinion, which you haven't, but I'll offer it, uh, my recommendation would be that if we get, my recommendation would be since we are gonna be rolling out our remote learning plan in the near future, it would make sense, and again, we can talk about it, it would make sense to cancel April vacation because to roll out our remote learning plan for two weeks and have a week off, you're not gonna have the continuity. And the four days of April vacation would count as part of the five days we need to make up. So I believe we're, with, I believe we were scheduled to be out June 16th. So having to make up one day, we would be, June 17th, Chris? So I believe our last day was June 17th. So if we had to make up five days, I think we get out on the 23rd or 24th. So if we made up four of those days, Mr. Pulaski, our last day would be June 18th. But uh, that is something that superintendents across the state are discussing. If that's something you would like me to explore and discuss with our teachers union and our other collective bargaining groups, I'd be happy to explore and discuss that and bring it back to you. Okay, thank you. I would definitely like you to explore that because uh, I think I think we need continuity. So I, I would certainly advocate for canceling yeah. April vacation. That a I'm, I'm sorry, was that a motion? No, uh, I suppose oh. we could make it a motion, but let, let me let me ask all my questions and then we can decide. Okay. I, I have a comment, Mayor, Madam Mayor. Yes, Mrs. Dirty. Uh, a couple of things. I think it's premature to make a motion until we get the heads up from the Department of Education uh, regarding April vacation. So we can do that at we don't have an awful lot of time, but at one of our other meetings that could be posted. It is the purview of the school committee, as you know, because we adopt the calendar. And is this an issue that's on the table in your uh, bargaining sessions with the TEA? That, I have not discussed mm -hmm. April vacation with any of our collective bargaining units. So it would be a subject for bargaining too, so. Okay, uh, Mr. Pulaski, are you through? Um, yeah, thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, now I have, I have a couple more questions, if that's okay. Sure. Um, so I want to know. Um, well, many many parents want to know: Will any of the schoolwork that has been released up to this point count for grades? The guidance we've received from Desi is that, that the enrichment work would not be graded. It would be work that we would use to, again, prevent regression, make sure students have not learned the skills that they've attained. And any work moving forward, the only thing that we've had, as far as guidance from DESE has been at the high school level, and they've talked about making that work a credit or no credit. We don't want to see students be punished, mm -hmm. be hurt or impacted in a negative way. We only want to see students benefit during this uh, crisis. Okay, thank you. And then just follow up to that, um... I, I guess, I don't, I don't know, uh, I don't want to say enforce, but how are we going to sort of um, check up on that? Because I, I get the feeling from certain parents is, I guess, the way they're interpreting some of the enrichment work is that it is counting for grades. And I think there's some nervousness on that. So I, I guess I'd like to see just maybe some clear communication to all the teachers so that it, it's very clearly reported to the, the parents what is graded, what is not, and then if and when we get to a point where things are counting as grades that it's very clearly credit, no credit versus, you know, 96, 85, all that good stuff. So I have uh, drilled that into our principals and asked our principals to communicate that to our teachers. Uh, we have also put it, I believe, in our communications under our education uh, EMOC protocol. We have sent that publicly. And during our impact bargaining, again, I can't get into details regarding um, what we're discussing in impact bargaining, but uh, once we have an agreement with the TEA, it will be shared, the TEA will share it with their members and we will share it with our principals. Okay, excellent. And then um, Madam Mayor, if it's okay, one last question. 
Um, so first, uh, Mrs. Perry, thank you very much for all the work that everyone has done uh, reaching out to try to connect uh, the unaccounted for students. So uh, 267, I, I'd, I'd certainly like to see that get down as low as we possibly can. Um, what, what will we be doing going forward to try to contact those last 267 uh, families that are unaccounted for? Um, I can just jump in too. Oh. Perry didn't share. When we were doing our outreach, when we were doing our robocalls, we did, and Mrs. Perry can probably speak to it better. She explained to me that a lot of the families um, have not reached out or did not pick up or contact us because they were struggling to, um, you know, to figure life out during this crisis. Some families we learned moved as far as New Hampshire to go live with family members so that they would have daycare. So we'll continue to use our calls. We'll continue to drill down into our school brains, emergency calls, emergency contacts. Uh, we can also util utilize snail mail where we can mail letters out to folks and ask them to reach out to the schools. Uh, so we'll continue um, to do our best. Again, I'm cautious about using our staff uh, as, 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 as much of a skeleton crew as we're running right now. I don't wanna put our staff at risk. Uh, we'll continue to remind friends when we reach out to them to check in on your neighbors, let your neighbors know that we need them to check in with their teachers. It's almost getting back to a, a grassroots approach where we're going to ask people to check in on each other. So those are just some of the things that we plan to do, and I'll let Mrs. Perry add any other additional uh, work that we're doing around con connecting with our families. Mm. Yeah, thank you. I, I would say that, I mean, you know, like I said, the, some of these families were contacted and didn't get back to the teachers right away. And so then the names came to me. I personally called some of these families and those were some of the comments that I heard. Like Mrs. Perry, I got the call, I got an email, I just haven't had a chance to reach back out again. Like Mr. Cabral said, there was another family. She said, look, I, I'm, I'm struggling, I'm a nurse. I have no place to, for my child to stay. I had to bring them to New Hampshire. So there, there's been a lot of that. I think people that are just kind of trying to get um, their lives in order. Um, we will continue with um, with the reach out that we're doing with the teachers, the principals, the community facilitators. Um, some of these families have been families that English isn't a first language, so that's why I've brought Mrs. Mendoza in. So we'll continue with those efforts. I think um, bringing the Family Resource Center on board has been helpful to us, and the We Care email has been helpful. So we're just going to continue, you know, moving forward. And you know, as I said to Mr. Cabral, it's 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 a struggle even even when we're in school, Mr. Pulowski. We have families that are just non-responsive. I mean, I, I go to court every other Thursday <laughs> with my truancy officers for parents that don't, you know, they don't answer our phone calls and they don't come, you know, come to school. So it's it's a struggle even when we're there. Um, but it doesn't mean that we're not going to continue with our efforts. So we we certainly will continue with those. I hope that answered your question. One other anecdotal story and another fact out of uh, Martin was uh, a parent explained to uh, Mr. Kudo over Mulcahy that her infant child threw her iPhone in the toilet and was unable to use it. So that's a funny story. A real uh, important point is over at Martin, <clears throat> with a matter of five minutes with a faculty member calling from home phone number, unable to reach a child, Ms. Rodriguez was in the building, called from the school. The parent answered and said, well, I recognize the school number and realized it was important. So there are you know, active efforts from people from home reaching out to children. Parents maybe say, I don't recognize that number. I'm not gonna look at it and follow it up right away. So it's an ongoing challenge that will keep going ahead with it. And then the last piece I'll mention, Mr. Pulaski too. So as we work through our impact bargaining with our teachers, there are other groups that we've discussed and how to utilize their talents and their expertise. And part of what we discussed was utilizing those individuals to make those phone calls, those repetitive phone calls to reach out to our families. So uh, I, I think 98% is good, but it's not good enough. Uh, we'll continue working on getting that number down to make sure that one, again, the point of this is not just to call and say hi. The point is to call and make sure that one, they're accessing the materials that we're providing and two, to make sure that students or families have access to meals and, uh, and anything that we can do to support our families, we will do to support our families. 
Thank you. All right, so any other questions, comments on the, uh, Mr. D'Souza, uh, Mr. Souza? You're on mute or we can't hear you. Sorry about that. I always forget that. Um, I think it's appropriate to, um, and Ms. Doherty, this motion is not to cancel or authorize the cancellation of, of uh, April vacation. I think I'm, I'm gonna make a motion to authorize the super authorize the superintendent to explore the possibility with the DESE and whatever it's going to take, whether that we could um, uh, cancel school vacation. We need to gather the facts. We need to gather the information. We should just allow him to do that and bring it back to us for a decision at the next meeting, which will be next Wednesday. That's the motion. Mrs. Doherty? Uh, it just... Uh... I mean, I'm, I don't object to it, but I don't believe that the superintendent needs a decision by the school committee to explore with the department. I certainly, um, theoretically, the superintendent is doing that anyway. Superintendent, are you exploring the possibility with the department? Uh, I am working with superintendents and Desi. Yes, we are, we, are, we are giving the commissioner our perspective on the pros and cons of having or not having April vacation. My, the only reason is it's time sensitive. So um, we, need to, we, need, we need to make a decision either way, really, at the next meeting. Uh, yeah. Right, right, yeah. Right, 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 the commissioner. So if, you, um, if, if the committee is open to the Friday, allowing me to participate in the Friday call with the commissioner, I should have some more information within the next day or two. I'll withdraw the motion because it's already in going. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, David. All right, any other discussion? Mr. DeMello. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, through you to uh, either Superintendent uh, Cabral or Assistant Superintendent Monaghan, when you mentioned powering down buildings, um, of the 12 or 13 buildings we have that are fully functioning, uh, are we uh, attempting to just isolate, let's say, eight out of those 13 buildings and not be used at all so we can conserve some energy, uh, whatever it's electricity or heating or whatever? Is that ongoing or is that even possible? Uh, so right, right now, we do have custodians still reporting to buildings and cleaning, primarily on first shift, which is uh, from like 6.37 to about 2. And we do have one building that's operating first and second shift, which is the high school. Uh, so I would not, I can't say we have all our buildings powered down completely. Uh, we keep, we're keeping the heat at a minimum uh, during this time. Um, and as far as electricity goes, I know Mrs. Moynihan did work with the building department to power down our buildings as much as possible. Just based on my observation, I think there's still more we can do with the electricity in a few of our schools uh, to really, uh, again, ma maximize our efficiencies. We haven't looked into a team cleaning, consolidating custodians into different schools. We've asked each custodian in each school to continue cleaning their building or custodians for whatever reason. Uh, we've, we provided four reasons why custodians uh, can excuse themselves from work mostly medical or the care for our loved ones to limit risk. Uh, those custodians we've asked to go in and check the buildings to make sure there's no vandalism, there's no uh, leaky pipes or anything that would warrant uh, a call to the building department. So we've tried to power down as much as possible. I think we can do more, but uh, we got based on my experience. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Souza. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just to follow up to Greg's question, and that is uh, my engineering, uh, engineering mind uh, to the superintendent, probably a Ms. Moynihan. Uh, mechanical systems, when you power them down for uh, totally off or whatever it may be for a long period of time, you always end up with leaks, hydraulic, uh, pneumatic, uh, water, and things like that. Have we gone over with Mr. Uh, with Rick Ames the um, any? possible issues if we power things down too long or things that we can power down and things we cannot power down and how that would work because uh, we could run into problems with, with that once we power everything back up. So have we gone over that with the building department at all and, and, and make it made like a checklist of different buildings and different mechanical systems? 
So we have not powered any building completely down, which we would have the issue of restarting things. And I mean, from my experience is when you restart something after shutting it down, that you tend to run in, into the problem. So we have things operating at a bare minimum. Uh, and if, for example, uh, just think about our freezers. Similar to what we do in the summer with our freezers, we consolidate all the food into one freezer and run that at, at operation level and then power down the other freezer to a minimum. So that's always an issue with freezers. When you power them down and start them back up, that's when we tend to have most issues. So we so mechanical, systems are up and, mechanical systems are still up and running. At a minimum where we can, right. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Madam May. I'm all set with that. All right, thank you. So are we moving on to administrative business? Okay, staffing report. Eden placed on file. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. None, so voted. Subcommittee reports, uh, finance and law subcommittee, Mr. Martin. I'll be very quick. My internet keeps crashing on me. My f screen keeps freezing. Uh, finance and law met early this evening. We had three items on the agenda. I did the first two. Mr. Fiore finished the uh, meeting because I did lose my Wi-Fi. First item on the agenda was student activity requests. There weren't any. The second item was six bid awards for food services. And uh, there were several questions by Mr. Souza regarding uh, the uh, the low bids. They were all answered to his uh, satisfaction by Ms. Moore. Uh, so, Joe, you're, Martin, you're freezing up, Joe. <laughs> you want to uh, call the uh, call the motion? So uh, I'll let him take over at this point. I, uh, thank you. Uh, the uh, bid awards uh, are as follows for bread uh, Fantini Bakery which is our uh, current vendor was the low bidder and, and recommended uh, paper Mansfield paper which again is our current vendor and has been recommended uh, milk New England ice cream which uh, was the only eligible bid. Uh, they have been our milk contractor before, and we do use them extensively for ice cream. So uh, there was no problem with recommending them as well. Uh, for groceries, uh, uh, recommendation is our current vendor for that, Thurston Foods. Uh, for equipment repair, uh, American Commercial Re Appliance has been recommended. And for rigid refrigeration equipment repair, uh, mechanical air has been recommended. So, was there a motion, Mr. Fiore, to? Uh, I, I would. I would move that uh, we uh, approve the report and adopt the recommendations. Second. So motion, motion. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. So voted. Uh, new business, remote learning plan. So I was being the eternal optimist. I had <laughs> that we could present it in full. So uh, despite a six and a half hour bargaining session, uh, we still have uh, five items that we plan to wrap up tomorrow. And then uh, again, I'll bring it to the TEA subcommittee. I'll do my best to answer any questions that you may have regarding it, but I can't get into details as to what we've been discussing with our uh, teachers. Thank you, Mr. Cabral. Unfinished business action item updates. Um, number one, Assistant Director of Food Services and Purchasing Job Description for a third reading on a roll call vote. This is Fagan. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, thank Sorry. you. <laughs> Ms. Doherty? Oh, yes. <laughs> Mr. Pulowski? Yes. Mr. Fiore? Yes. Mrs. Fagan votes yes. Mr. Martin? Yes. Mrs. Almeida? Yes. Mr. DeMello? Yes. Mr. Souza? You're on Mr. mute, David. Mr. Souza? 
I think he said yes. <laughs> Read my lips. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Too many buttons to push. <laughs> the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, number two, special education team chair job description on a third reading for uh, on, a, on a roll call vote. Okay. Ms. Doherty? Yes. Mr. Pulowski? Yes. Mr. Fiore? Yes. Mrs. Fagan votes yes. Mr. Martin? Yes. Mrs. Almeida? Yes. Mr. DeMello? Yes. Mr. Souza? Yes. Thank you. Three is action item review. Uh, the only one I'm not sure about, I don't, I know they were scheduled to start the work at Letty before the COVID-19 crisis. I don't believe they've started that work, right, Mrs. Moynihan? No, I don't believe they've started that work. So No, they have not. And I'm not sure if they'll be able to during this crisis because if, they, if uh, some of the work may warrant the contractors working in close proximity, <laughs> follow up and see uh, what the plan is. <laughs> can indeed do it. Uh, other than that, I believe everything else stays as is. Thank you. Critical items not reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance. Mr. DeMello and then Mr. De uh, Mr. Souza. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so just uh, to revert back, uh, Attorney Gay's working on the letter. Can we get a copy of that letter as soon as it's uh, sent off to EF Tours? I believe he said something about the effect he's going to start on it tomorrow. Can we get a copy of that letter as soon as it's done? Yes, as soon as it's done, I will email the entire board a copy of the letter. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Souza? Thank you. Thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone, for for uh, for uh, our patience tonight. Uh, it's still, this is still working out well. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know next Wednesday, April the eighth at four thirty. Is everyone good with that? April the eighth at four thirty on the off week. Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone, and back to you, Madam Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Anything else under H? None. Okay. No press. And Motion to adjourn. <laughs> second. Thank you. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. None. So voted. Thank you very much. Night, everybody. Stay safe, everybody. Stay safe.